What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of my favorite boats, if not my all-time favorite boat to build, a well-built 1652. This is a brand new boat and trailer. I'm going to give you guys a full walkthrough and show you exactly how it comes from the factory, the upgrades you can get, all types of stuff. Before we do that, I just want to touch on a couple of things. All right, I'm going to interrupt this video for a very short period just to share something with you guys. Sports Marina is local to me. They're about 40 minutes away from here. They actually are under new ownership. Now, I've been in course with the new owner. He's very cool. He is buying a bunch of these well-built boats. He came to my shop, talked to me firsthand, and wants to know what you guys want, what are the best boats that he should buy. He's putting in a new order now, so they should have some new well-builts coming in shortly. You can order these well-builts any way you want them. Let's get back to the video. Now, my opinion of John boats changed dramatically when I first saw this boat. The first boat I ever built was for myself. It was about 12 years ago. I built an old 1965 Alumacraft. This thing had tons of rivets in it. I got it off of Craigslist. I had no idea what I was doing. I just wanted to get a boat to get out there on the water. And I bought this boat. I put a lot of money into it, a lot of time into it. And I got lucky with that boat. I traded it for a 20 foot striper sea swirl that I kept. We used it with the family for like eight years. But right after I built that boat, Boat, I had another guy randomly call my shop, ask me if I could do any aluminum welding on a boat. And he ended up being one of my best friends. And I built this boat for him, the same exact boat as this one right here. And when he showed up with this well built, I looked at this front end and it just changed my whole opinion. I had no idea there were boats like this out there. I was in awe. I wanted one of these boats so bad, but I couldn't afford it at the time. And I was like, man, that thing is sick. But Little did I know how far down the rabbit hole I would go with these things because I've got two of these and one of them's King Neptune. And this one right here is the exact same size, the 1652. I think it's the perfect size to build out if you're going to do a John boat to bass boat conversion. And personally, I think this is probably the best bang for the buck boat that you can buy to do something like that with. I'm going to turn this camera around. I'm going to give you guys a full once over and show you the ins and out in every inch of this brand new boat. And then I'm going to tell you what I would do with it and how I would buy one, depending on what your budget is and what you want to do with it. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, so check out that front end. Man, that thing is aggressive, super strong. I love the way these things are set up. The first time I saw this, I was in awe. I mean, it's just such a cool boat. The way it's set up is just really nice. And with this big top on here and the V in the front, it's super strong. The whole level of fabrication on it, it's right up my alley. It's dope. Now, the cool thing about these well builds is you can get them any way you want. And this one was purchased specifically the way I would want it because I'm going to build this thing out. We got the smallest available front deck you can get. This thing is only about 36 inches right here. And it just has this little opening in here. We're going to end up doing away with that. But you could order these things with a floor. You could have a live well, you can have side panels, you could have gun boxes, you can have extended front deck. There's so many options. And if you are not handy and DIY to build this thing, or you don't have somebody that's gonna build it out for you, then that might be a good option for you. The only issue for me with that is that those products are subpar compared to what I can do with them. So if I'm gonna build one, I'd like to have it as bare bones as possible. The only complaint I have with this boat these big gunnels that come up the side, they run up taller than the bench does in the back or the deck up in the front. So I have to cut those down if I wanna make this thing look streamlined all the way from the bow to the stern, but it's not a big deal because this boat is really sick. And this boat can be purchased for about 3,500 bucks. I mean, 3,500 bucks for a completely welded hull, this thing will last a lifetime as long as you take care of it. This customer actually upgraded this trailer. It's a sick trailer. He got the aluminum diamond plate fenders and he got these big guide bunks right here. Now these things have like a, a PVC pipe that goes over them. I had to take it off because I don't have the ceiling high in here to bring them in here. They're super tall. They're actually over there. You can see them as orange tops, but uh, I had to take them off. They wouldn't fit in here with them. But this one has a full 20 inch transom. They did add a couple things into these well built over the years, they put this plate on here to help strengthen up the motor. And they added this piece. It's like a little strap, a flat bar that wraps up and over back down on to this gusset from the floor to the transom. And they've made this gusset right here taller over the years because the King Neptune boat that I have is a 2006 and it came up a lot lower. I didn't have to cut that top off like that, but 
think they changed this three or four years ago and it's not terrible but i will have to cut this down because we're going to obviously frame all this in and we're going to have this whole deck in here the whole boat running streamlined all the way from bow to stern to the back of the boat so it's pretty cool the way that they're set up though i mean these floor ribs in here these things are nice because they're flat on top and they're wide so it allows you to attach a floor down into them now you can see these are kind of rolled you see that light right there and that's just from the way these were bent they were over bent and when they smashed them down in here to weld these pieces across the floor it kind of took some of that bend out and it gave it like a roll in here it's not gonna be a big deal but i did notice that and they must have some type of machine that they set this whole boat into and then it comes in here and presses these down tight in order for them to get these welds in here because it would take a lot of force to give that back bend that's in there like that but all of them have that it's not as dramatic on the other side but it's definitely noticeable on this side over here you can even see them in some of these side pieces it's got a big divot in there where i guess they just hammer it there's some hammer marks on here they hammer this in shoot some mig welds over there I mean, it is what it is, but this is what I was talking about with these side pieces. You see how they come up so tall? Well, they only have about two inches welded here. So what I'll do is I'll come back and weld another two inches down here, whack these off right there, and that'll allow me to hide those up underneath of my deck and I can have everything streamlined. But this is about as bare bones as you can get this boat. I mean, this little compartment in the front is kind of pointless. I mean, you could fit a rope or some life jackets in there. But um, we're going to end up doing away with that. We might just leave it in there, but this boat's going to be getting a rod locker and stuff in it. So it's going to have a whole lot of stuff going on inside of this hole right here. But this is how I'd recommend getting your boat if you're DIY and you can handle it yourself because you could open this whole thing up. You put a center console, a side console. The majority of my boats are tillers. This one's going to be set up as a tiller because it's going to be a tournament John boat. This guy's going to fish in a bunch of local bass tournaments and he doesn't need to have any type of side console or center console this whole deck in here is probably going to come back to about this river right here it's going to have tons of storage and live wells and rod wire a whole nine yards but this boat is really sick though a couple of things i noticed with this 20.3 model that is a little bit discouraging is this front deck right here it slopes down dramatically now you can't see it but this line right here this was a water line this trailer jack is jacked all the way up and it had some water in here because it rained all the water ran out but that little bit right there set in there so it might pose an issue when i start building this boat out because i don't want to have any standing water up in that little v right there and i'm probably going to end up having to drop this backside down which it actually needs to drop down because if you can follow this line across here to where this back bench seat is this back bench seat is kicking forward just like this front deck is kicking forward. So it's kind of retarded, but I had the same issue in the last boat that I built for Billy's Badass Boat Build. And I ended up cutting this and bringing this up higher because his front deck did not have such a slope to it. It was a little bit slope, but not as dramatic as this one. But this is all stuff that we're gonna figure out. It's not that noticeable to the untrained eye. And you could probably blend this whole thing in and hide it if you wanted to build this out yourself. But these are just things that I pick up on. And some of these welds in here are a little bit suspect. I mean, these welds on these back side, they look pretty good. These are all pulse MIG welds. And then these back ones across here, these are TIG welds. So I can tell the way these things were welded. This guy's right-handed, he welded this one. And this one he welded from inside of the boot. Then on the other side, it's the same type of deal. Some of these welds look a lot better than other ones, but you know it is what it is this is a pretty ugly weld this was welded uphill that is really ugly but uh you know it's it's not terrible and then again he came up here he started in this back corner and he welded it from inside the boat going that way then the back seam again tig welded so there's some good welds in here and there's some suspect welds in here but the whole fabrication of these boats is pretty cool i like the way it's set up because these floor ribs are like stamped in here or bent they're damn near perfect. There's a seam right in the center. You can see that right there. That seam runs all the way down the center of this boat and it's basically built out of two pieces. Now up here where it starts to roll up, obviously they had to cut this out and form this and there is a weld seam in that corner right there and it runs back to right there. And then it's a bend seam. The rest of the boat 
is completely bent as two pieces, one on this side and one on this side. So it's a good setup. I like the way it's built. And for the price range of around $3,500, you're not really going to find anything that is cool and is nice and aggressive looking and heavy duty is going to last as this boat right here. I mean, they got a lot of welded boats, guys. There's literally hundreds of different brands and companies that build welded boats, but a lot of them are another thousand to two thousand or more than this boat right here. I recommend that if you're going to build out a John boat to bass boat conversion, you at least get a welded hull. That is the number one thing you must do. All right, guys, so that is my two cents on a John boat. What is a John boat to me and what I look for in a build. Now, this boat is going to be sick when I build it out. It's still a sick boat the way it sits. A lot of guys get these. They put wood floors and stuff in them. I've done a lot of modifications for guys, small builds here and there, different pieces of the puzzle. And then one day they get to the end of the puzzle. and They're like, I want you to finish it off, paint it, turf it, put your decals on. And that's how a lot of my builds go. But if you're looking to build a sick boat, it's going to be like a lifetime boat for you. I mean, a lot of guys are just like, yeah, I just want to get something that's going to last me to get through, you know, a couple of seasons. I'm going to put 500 bucks into it. That's fine. You can do that. Go get you a riveted boat, throw some wood in it and some carpet and call it a day. If you want to build a trick 10 and you want something that's going to last you a lifetime, you got to build this thing the right way. And the most important thing is the foundation. You got to start with a welded hole. I'm not telling you, you got to start with a well built. I'm telling you, you to start with some type of a welded boat way if you get a crack in this thing or have an issue you can get a welder to weld it instead of having a leaky rivet that you can't get to the top side of it to bucket and it's just really a pain in the ass because you already start your build with literally hundreds of holes in your boats with rivets in it i mean guarantee you those rivets are eventually going to end up leaking. But a lot of people are not going to tell you, yeah, my boat leaks. I get, you know, I got to fill up a whole gallon of water in a couple hours. No, people don't tell you that. But the truth of the matter is that it does happen. And it happened to me. I had a couple of riveted John boats. Every single riveted boat I have ever owned has leaked. And I guarantee you that all of them will eventually leak. So do yourself a favor. If you're going to put a lot of money into a boat, start with a welded hull, guys. A lot of my bills end up being five thousand to fifteen thousand dollars and if guys are putting that type of money into them i'm not going to build a riveted boat for them that's why i don't really build out riveted holes it's not my thing it's not my cup of tea i don't like it those holes are thinner and they're just not something that i'm interested in building out but it is what it is guys to each his own wherever you're at in your stage of boating or boat building I'd be glad to help you out. If you have any questions, you can holler at me. Send me an email at professionalwelding at gmail.com or you can check out my website, Trick Tens John Boats. There's tons of hatches and stuff up there. I'll be glad to build you something custom if you need it. Help me out, guys. Buy some of this merch, tricktens.net. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see y'all next time. Next episode, this boat's going to be getting built out. It's time for me to get back to work.